Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Nova and I'm going to be introducing myself today. So as of right now, I believe I only have the one weekly reading vlog up. So I figured now would be a good time to do the like new to booktube tag to really introduce myself, talk about my reading, my reading journey, a little bit about me. So I'm not going to be doing the like original, like the booktube newbie tag TM <laughs> that everyone does. I found one by a channel called Between Chapters and I liked the questions a little bit better so I'm gonna do those and I believe this one does include a few questions that's on the original booktube newbie tag but yeah I'm gonna go through these. Thank you to Between Chapters. I don't think they're still active on YouTube or anything but if they are thank you. <laughs> So first question, where am I joining you from? I'm joining you from New Jersey. I'm from South Carolina, lived in Atlanta for like four or five years. And then a couple years ago, I moved up to New Jersey. It's a big, big move. How old are you? I am 29 years old. Why did you join BookTube? Mainly for documentation purposes. I just think it'll be really cool in a couple years time to be able to look back and see the progression of my reading, see everything that I read that year, the wrap ups, along with the fact that I watch so much booktube and it just looks like a lot of fun. Doing little reading challenges sounds really fun. Doing readathons is gonna be really fun. I'm gonna be doing the full moon readathon 2023 here in a couple weeks and honestly that was kind of my big push to do this because it looks like such a fun challenge that it would be a shame if I didn't get it on video I guess. What is the meaning behind your channel name? My name is Nova and I read things. <laughs> I really couldn't come up with anything like clever or punny and honestly I don't feel like I'm a seasoned enough reader to have anything be like bookish or my library or anything like that so I don't know. I read things. What types of books do you read or want to talk about on here? Kind of anything. I'm not a big romance girly and a lot of like higher fantasy stuff does scare me. I'm not opposed to it, but I haven't quite made it there yet. But I do love books that have magical elements to them. A lot of my favorite books this year have been magical in some way or another. I mean, just off the top of my head, some of my favorites, Light from Uncommon Stars, No Gods, No Monsters, Piranesi, which I just read and bought myself a copy of the book so that I can have it. And Slewfoot is a recent read. All of these include like magical elements, but they're not like Akatar type fantasy, you know? But for the most part, I'll read anything that comes to me highly rated. And most of my favorite books that I've read this year, I found through booktube. And I feel like I have a good enough grasp on my taste in books to, to know what I'm gonna like, to know what I'm not gonna like. But yeah, kind of open to anything. I'm even open to some romance if I find the right ones, but just like I'm I'm not an Akatar girly, I, I don't think I'll ever be a Colleen Hoover girly either. So it's a matter of like the right one. I liked the charm offensive a lot, but so far that's been the only one. But that's why we're here. I'm excited to experiment to find new genres that I want to read in. So yeah, recommend me anything. I'll, I'll read just about anything. Who are some of your favorite authors? I am, I'll get into this in a second, but I'm still relatively new to like really, really reading, like more than a few books a year reading. So I haven't quite established who my like all time favorite authors are. But what I can tell you is over the course of this year, I've really ended up liking Grady Hendrix and I've loved Seanan McGuire. Anything that I've read from her, I've ended up loving. I've read the entire Wayward Children series. I've read Middle Game. I've read, oh, what's it called? Oh, Over the Woodward Wall, which is the tie-in novella for Middle Game. And coming up, I plan on reading Into the Drowning Deep, which is by Mira Grant, which is the, I almost said pen name. What's, what's the word I'm looking for? Pseudonym. That's, it's the pseudonym for uh, Shonda McGuire. So everything I've read by her, I love. So I feel like she's gonna stay a favorite author for a while. What's the last book I read? Juniper and Thorn. And what am I currently reading? I'm gonna be starting Gone to the Wolves here tonight, tomorrow, sometime. What do you use for bookmarks? Ooh, let me show you. Hold on. So the main one that I use is this like this beautiful bookmark from Etsy. There we go. Isn't it so pretty? It's very jingly and I love it. Like, doesn't it just look so pretty? So that's my go-to one. I've also got this lovely bookmark here that I got off of Etsy and then a couple older ones. If you're a K-pop fan, if you're a BTS fan, you'll get these, but um, these were some freebies I got and I'm just so charmed by them. 
So yeah, if the others are in use, I'll usually pull these out. Show us your TBR pile. I plan on doing like a whole video on the physical TBR books that I have, mainly because I don't have a ton of them. So that was a fucking lie. I think it'll be fun to kind of catalog it and go through and also get a good sense as to how many books I have on my physical TBR. Which do you prefer, hardcover or paperback? I don't really have a preference. I think if I'm buying myself a copy of something, I usually go hardcover. I just think they look really nice, but I cannot deny the incredible feeling of like a good floppy paperback. Yeah, I don't really have any strong feelings either way. Ebooks or physical books? Physical books. I pretty much exclusively read physical and I'm always tandem reading with the audiobook if I can find it, which nine times out of 10 I can. But yeah, the only times I'll read something digitally is if it's like not available physically or like my library doesn't have it, which it's a, it's a rarity. So the vast majority is physical. Owning or borrowing books? Both. I have definitely started taking advantage of my local library because it's literally within walking distance of me, which is a dream. And they have a really good selection. So nine times out of 10, I end up finding what I'm looking for. The books that I own are either books that I have read and have bought myself a copy used, um, I'm a big fan of Pango books, Better World books, A books. I just really like having used copies and nearly every single time I found near pristine condition versions of them or old library books that I've had to cut the plastic off of, but I don't mind. I think it gives it a lot of character when it has like the library stamp on top. Like this one. This one's a book called Root Magic. I'm gonna end up talking about this book at some point because I really loved it, but I got it at a library book sale and I just think it gives it so much fun character. And I also lucked out because there's this one thrift store near me that there must be like one or two regular donators who are huge book people because every single time I go in there, not only am I finding books that I'm interested in, I'm finding like new hardcover, like book of the month books, special edition books. I got this incredible fairy loot version of The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. It's so pretty, like the sprayed edges. This is signed. This has all the inclusions still in it and everything. I got this for $2.99. This is like, people are selling this for like 70, 80 bucks. So this is one of my favorite finds, but it's always the same thrift store. A good chunk of the books on my physical TBR have just come from there because I like recognized it and got it for like a buck fifty. So yeah, I pretty much exclusively buy used or I'm checking stuff out from my library. Editing Nova here. Amendment. There are a few cases in which I have pre-ordered books new or like gone into the store to get something new. And for the most part, it's sequels in a series that I really love. So like the new Wayward Children book or like smaller trusted authors. So like Andrew Joseph White, I just pre-ordered his new book because I loved Hell Followed with us. So for the most part, I buy use, but I'll make special exceptions for stuff, especially smaller authors, because I know how important pre-orders are, but yeah. As for audiobooks, I have a Scribd account and Hoopla and Libby, and those are kind of the three I'll cycle through to find the books that I'm looking for. And if there's something that I really, really want to read, then I might buy something off my friend using my friend's Audible account. But for the most part, it's it's those three. I really like utilizing the, the free resources because I do not think reading has to be cost prohibitive. Hoopla and Libby are completely free if you have a library card. So I'm enjoying the collecting without having to break the bank. What book or series got you into reading? I can tell you exactly what it is. This is the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. I ended up hunting all of these down used with the exception of Lost in the Moment and Found. I think I got it used, but it was nearly the same price because it had just come out. Oh, like here's a good example of the stamps on the top of them. I think it's so fun. It has so much personality. These books have been very loved. But yeah, the story behind me getting into these is my coworker at the time, we shared an office and we both started listening to audiobooks as we worked. And we were going through a lot of like memoirs and stuff because it was easy to work to. And I saw Books in Lala. It was when Lost in the Moment and Found came out, did a reading vlog, reading the entire series. And I was like, that sounds fascinating. And she is giving every book five stars. I have to check it out. So I was like, hey, do you want to listen to this series with me? They're short novellas, so we'll be able to blast through them. And then I proceeded to finish all eight of them in eight days. And that honestly just kickstarted the whole thing. That was in January. And so far I've read 70 books 
And to put that into perspective, in 2021, I think I read three books. In 2022, I read 23 books. And this year I've read 70 so far. <laughs> it's only July. I'm very curious to see what my final number is going to be. But yeah, I owe that series a lot. And I'm going to be first in line when the new one comes out in January, I think. I think they come out every January, but it was just announced. I don't remember the name of it, but yeah, the past two have been incredible. And so I cannot, I can't wait, I can't wait. How did you discover BookTube? I really don't remember. I think one of the first people I followed was Books and Lala, and then it kind of spiderwebbed from there. Another favorite is Reads with Rachel. Jordaline Reads is a new favorite and I am obsessed with her. Jordaline, if you ever see this, I'm in love with you. So yeah, I don't remember who the first was, but I've been actively watching for the past maybe like two or three years. What challenges do you think you'll face with your own channel? Hopefully none. I'm not going into this wanting to like make it big and make money or anything. So like if it gets challenging past the point of it being fun, then I simply will not do it. But like realistically, the most challenging thing would probably just be setting myself up for a challenge and not really liking the books, I guess. But yeah, I don't think this is gonna be a very challenging thing. <laughs> oh wait, maybe the fact that I'm having to film when my roommate is not home or cannot hear me <laughs> because as of right now, no one knows I'm doing this, so that might be a little bit of a challenge. Unless things start going really well, then I'll probably tell them. But right now it feels a little silly to be like, I'm filming for my two subscribers. <laughs> Where else can we find you? Um, I've got my Goodreads and my Storygraph linked in my banner on YouTube and probably in the description. I have an Instagram. I don't use it a ton. I use the stories more than I use the posting. And it's not like a proper bookstagram, but feel free to follow me if you want to uh, message me if you want, but it's at umbreon.jpg. All right, and that's it. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I'm excited to continue posting. I'm excited to scream about the books that I'm reading so that I don't have to talk my roommate's ear off. Subscribe for more videos. Subscribe to see Gumby, my Sphinx cat again, if you saw her in the last video and you want more Gumby content, oh boy, you've got more coming. She is currently sleeping right behind my camera inside a blanket. But yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.